On this board we're going to discuss soil fertility and grassland management for the Tullamore farm. So this is a new lease, we've taken on this lease in the past 12 months and obviously we're taking on new land, we need to familiarise ourselves uh, with the soils, that's what's going to drive output uh, in terms of grass growth over the next 15 years. So looking at the previous history of this farm, this was a tillage and a cattle farm, so roughly two thirds of the farm was in tillage, a third was in, was in grassland and it tends to be uh, that the lower lying farm parts of the farm were in grass and uh, the better land, and especially around this area, would have been in tillage, so this was a cereal growing farm. Now one point noted in cereal farm farms is that they tend to be low in soil organic matter but on this farm the organic matter is actually quite high you know it's tribute to the previous owners that it was it was reasonably well farmed and the um, and uh, and because it was cattle on the farm there was always nutrients going back on in terms of organic matter so the so soil organic matter is quite good in comparison to let's say the greenfield farm in Kilkenny which was in tillage for 50 years and soil organic matters were quite low even though peas and K levels were quite high it did take a number of years for that to build up in terms of uh, in, in terms of uh, driving on grass growth but on this farm uh, we're in a fortunate position that soil organic matter is good and that's, and also uh, to be fair the soil fertility is also good so looking at the board we have um, in terms of phosphorus. So we'd soil sampled last, uh, last Christmas and 46% of the farm is at index 1 and 2, so 54% is at index 3 and 4 and the majority of that is actually at index 4. So half the farm is, is on target and half the farm is below target. Uh, so we're going to obviously target to, to increase the, the P level on the half the farm that's low through targeting slurry and then chemical, uh, chemical P applications. Looking towards potash, 88% of the farm is at index 1 and 2, with the remainder at index 3. So none of the farm is at index 3 for K, and, and the majority of it, like almost 90%, is, is deficient in K. Uh, so K is an easier nutrient, I suppose, to build up than, than, than phosphorus. So that's, uh, if you were to be low in 1, I prefer to be low in K than low in, than low in P. So we'll be targeting a lot more slurry and, uh, and a lot more chemical, chemical K on, the, on, on this farm. So we'll probably go with around a muriate of potash towards uh, next month or the month after. There's no limitations on when we can spread K, we can spread it all year round. It's, it's, not, a, it's not a risk to the environment. So, and there's no nitrates limitations on, on the amount of K we can spread either. So that's, that's a positive, I suppose, in terms of uh, easier to build up K than it is build up P. Uh, and we obviously we're going to be limited on terms of nitrates directive and what we can spread in, in P. So that's going to be a slower build up, but we can achieve that by uh, regular soil sampling. So soil sampling every year, making sure that we're targeting our, our chemical P applications where it's needed. So that's just reflected in the, in the different graphs in terms of, of where the levels are. Moving on then to, um, to what's actually happening in terms of management. So the farm is, Jur uh, here is spreading, is spreading fertilizer himself every couple of weeks uh, after grazing. He usually spreads once a week after grazing. Um, so far this year there's 135 kilograms of nitrogen spread per hectare, 10 kilos of, of phosphorus spread to date, and 37 kilos of potash spread to date. He's just after going out with a round of 18612. He plans to spread another round of that later in the year, and probably two more rounds of nitrogen uh, before the close period in the middle of September. So we've about six weeks left where he can spread fertilizer. Um, that's going to, you know, we're going to soil sample again at the end of this year and see where we are in terms of in terms of P's and K levels, and that will determine it. Um, one nutrient or one element that we didn't look at was was um, acidity. So soil acidity or pH. We're in Offaly, traditionally high in high in uh, pH. So the farm average here is 6.9, which is above our target. Our target is 6.3. So most of the farm does not need any any uh, any lime. Two fields were low in lime at pH of 5.9, so they've been spread and. Um, when the farm was, all the land that was receded also got lime, so at receding time. So we're actually, you know, we've not, not an issue with, with regards to lime. Moving on then to, to receding. So at this stage, most of the farm has been receded. We've actually uh, exceeded our expectations in what we could have, could have receded. And um, some of that was done at the back end of last year, but most of it was done this year. And when you include the land that's in kale here behind me, you know that there's a high proportion of the farm will be receded. And there's more land over at the home farm that's just to be, that's been sprayed off and ready to be, ready to be ploughed. So most of the farm was sown with a 50-50 mix of Abergain and Aberchoice, which Abergain is a tetraploid and Aberchoice is a diploid. They're both performing very highly on the on-farm evaluation study run by Moorpark. You know, they're good varieties, they've been well proven, that's why we use them. Whether we would have went with one variety or not is debatable. Um, in my view, there's probably no added benefit of using a, a mix when you're using good varieties. The issue, I suppose, on a lot of farms is 
there's mixes going in, some of the varieties are good, some of the varieties are inferior. You know, it's reducing the quality of the overall sport. So I'd say, you know, go monocultures or go one or two really good varieties. And also include co clover. So we've clover included in, in all the sports here in, in Tullamore. The, we've, uh, we've about 40 different paddocks set up around the farm. So it's a considerable investment in, in, uh, in, in fencing and paddock access. And to get the maximum gain out of that, we need to move animals regularly. So cows are moved, cows and calves are moved every, every 12, uh, 12 hours or 24 hours, depending on the size of the paddock and the amount of grass that's in it. Um, to move on then, I suppose in terms of uh, our target pre-grazing yields, which is going to determine performance per, per animal really, live weight gain, is driven by the amount of gra the, the quality of feed going into the stock. So we're targeting pre-grazing yields here of 1,400 kilos per hectare, which is just bang on target for uh, you know, a nice mix between grass going at the tree leaf stage and, uh, and, and quality. Um, and to do that, Ger measures the farm here once a week, does, uh, puts the figures into Pasture Base Ireland and calculates his, his targets. So his targets are to be around, at this stage of the year, mid-season, to be between 12, 10 and 12 days of grass ahead of the cows. Current stocking rate is 3.5 cows per hectare.